Are you a service-based business owner looking to increase profits to fund your lifestyle? Well, this podcast is for you. We bring you inspirational guests sharing actionable tips to solve many of the struggles you face each and every day. And now, over to your host, Paul Higgins. Welcome to the Build Live podcast. If you're a first-time listener and you love what you hear, please subscribe. If you're a regular, I'd love to get your feedback. You can go to paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash questions and you can ask me any questions that I can forward on to the guests and also I'll answer any of your questions as quick as I can. You're welcome to take notes but all of this great podcast that you're about to listen to is transcribed. So who have we got on today? So we've got on a couple. Yes, it's my first they're a couple within both business and life. And the way that they work together in this interview is absolutely outstanding. They've got five best-selling books. They've got six businesses. But what they really love doing is helping businesses find incredible virtual team members. And they've got some great processes that they go through. And I think it's you know one of the best-run businesses that I've certainly come across. And I've got a lot of experience in this industry. So what I'll do now is hand you over to Mark and Mark and Anne. That's right, Mark and Anne Lakey. And they're from Hire Smart Virtual Employees. Welcome, Mark and Anne, to the Build Live Give podcast. Mark and Anne are from Hire Smart virtual employees. Great to have you both here. We're glad to be here, Paul. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be with you today. Thank you. Well, as we were saying beforehand, it's the first time that I've had a couple both in life and business on the show. I don't normally do uh, two people in an interview, so I'm very excited. And I love the fact that you've got the corporate colors on (laughs) and that great background as well. It makes it uh, very special. So we are very lucky to have you. But why don't we just kick off, and uh, maybe I'll go to you first, Anne, but uh, when people say, hey, what do you do? Obviously, the name is uh, a great suggestion, but people say, you know, what does that really mean? What do you say? Well, we are a complete HR hiring, training, and certification program for our clients with a staffing component. So we are kind of that full service of helping people find amazing talent and then supporting them after the hire. Because we all know that when you hire somebody, that's great, but usually you don't realize how much help you need after until kind of you're a little bit into that relationship. So we we are a full turnkey hiring solution. Great. And, and is there any pre-work that you do with a client as well before that kicks in? Sure. I mean, obviously you know, hiring an employee is kind of that first initial step, right? It can be a little, like, I'm nervous, like, I'm I'm tired of doing this or that, and or I'm, I'm my my staff is very busy, and we, I know I need to support them. So a lot of what I do in the pre-work is help them imagine (laughs) kind of what's the best case scenario for you or for your staff to get them the help that they need. And and what does that look like? What kind of tasks are they doing? So really dialing in onto the the company's goals and objectives and needs. And so I do a lot of pre-work and helping them flesh that out uh, because we only do full-time dedicated employees. And so it kind of helps them understand that this isn't something that is part-time or this isn't something like project-based work, which is a lot of what you see in the virtual assistant space, right? It's kind of that project for hire, which is not what we do. And many times we'll find that business owners, whether they're, they're new or they've been around a while, they didn't learn how to hire. And, and so they, they struggle with it and they have some failures, whether it's local staff or remote. And you know, a lot of people will come to us and say, I've not had success with staff, especially I haven't had success with virtual staff. I don't know where I went wrong. And that's where Anne in the front end helps that individual, helps that business owner to better understand themselves and what they need. So it makes it a bigger success and better opportunity for them to grow their business. Right. And I'm going to come back to those struggles in a minute. But Mark, you know, and as you said, is the, the front end. What about you? What When people say to you, what do you do? What's your role in the business? Well, I'm part of the sales cycle. And uh, we used to do a lot of 
on stage teaching and education. Um, now we do it on Zoom, like we are here today. So, so we will be in corporate meetings. We'll be in association meetings. Um, we'll speak in state or national stages with associations. And so the two of us will speak and banter back and forth. Um, and then as we break off, people will many times say, I want to talk to you or I want to, uh, you know, I want to talk to Ann or I want to talk to you about it. Um, so I'm involved in that front end. And then I'm also, I cover the back part of the business too. And uh, we have six different businesses. So I'm the front end in some of those where then Ann is the back end in those. So let me answer that question. <clears throat> he allows me to do what I do best. And without his support, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. So he gives me a ton of just that additional support, not only mentally, but he's a great problem solver, great business partner. And so we we love to do it together. And really without kind of his support, I couldn't serve as many people as I do. Um, and he's the big key component in that. Brilliant. Well, that's, normally I ask that question in the uh, the the live section, I always get someone to say that to their partner. I'm going to say their partner's listening to this right now. <laughs> and they will be listening this time. Beautiful. You've done it together. Now those struggles, Mark, you talked about. So, you know, people struggling with hire, like, you know, if you had to pick three of the big ones, what are the three of the big ones that people really struggle with with hiring? The, the biggest thing that people struggle with is the fear. You know, the, the fear of I'm, I'm getting to a point I need to have some help, but I can't release and I can't let go. Um they don't know how to delegate. They don't know how to divide the work up because they want it to be perfect. And we have to teach them that done is better than perfect. Yeah. So that, that fear of letting go, that fear of it not being done perfectly correct. Um, and, and then the next thing I think that we have is business owners will come to us and say, well, I don't have training. I don't have processes. I don't have a procedures manual in place, even if they already have employees. So thinking about that, they already have employees, but they don't have a, a onboarding process. But that said, we don't have an onboarding process. We show them how to do that. We have a process that we teach them to make it easy. Uh, it's called one and done. And in that, you know, that's another fear that they have is they're not quite ready. And um, then I'd say that the, the last fear is they might not have enough work for this individual to do. And so they say, well, I really need some help, but it's not a full-time job yet. And Anne is real good about helping that business owner examine the things in their business that they're not doing, that they're not doing and cost them money because they're not doing them or that they're losing opportunities. Because if we can free up a business owner a day, you know, a one or two hours every day, think about the additional calls that they could make to bring in new business. And you know, based on their close ratio, she can usually show them that, hey, you're going to have enough hours to make enough sales calls to pay for this individual in about three weeks, four weeks, or something like that. Because they have so many more opportunities when they're not bogged down with the administrative tasks. So th those are the toughest things that they overcome and, and really helps them to see through the clutter, help to overcome the fear and does a really good job in that area. Great. And are those resources and online resources that you support people with? Like how, how does that work? Usually it's part of the consulting piece that I do after an engagement. So these are proprietary things that I walk through them as far as the consulting piece. Um, you know, a lot of business owners, they have it in their head. I mean, that's kind of what Mark was saying. Like they, they just, and the idea of having somebody virtual and having it in their head scares them. So part of my job is to help pull it out of them. And we have some methodologies for that, um, as well as kind of what I think is a mistake that a lot of people make when hiring is they hire emotionally and not analytically. And so that's the other kind of piece to this puzzle that we bring because they don't have the opportunity to hire, quote unquote, emotionally, because I've already done all the background screening, all of the analytics uh, for them. So anybody that that we put in front of them can do the work. 
And I think that's what allows us to have such a high success rate. We just, um, we actually just went through the numbers literally two weeks ago. We have a 98.7% success rate in our placements. And I think that that's really, really strong when you look at statistically where most people's failure rate is like in the 50s for their yeah. hiring. They hired their cousin because right. she needed a job, yeah. not because she was the right person. She needed the job, right? Or they really just like the person and it's like, oh, I just think you'd be amazing, but they don't really back it up with the skill set. So we take that part of it out of the equation for them. Yeah. And, and what's some of the ways that you test for that skill set? So we have a U.S.-based uh, testing platform that we use. It's called Criteria Corp. Um, but because we source all of our hires from the Philippines, mm-hmm. we have spent over the last, um, I guess it's three years now, three years with that. really kind of tweaking that particular software and taking out the cultural bias. So we have done just in the last year alone about 25,000 assessments that I've reviewed, looked at profiled our top performers, look for those correlations. And this is part of the what we coined as the analytics process, <laughs> um, you know, of, of the hiring. And it all comes down to data. And so that is one of the reasons we're so successful. That's number the first part of it is having the right selection process. And then the second piece of that is our certification process, which uh, is done after our clients select where we're evaluating their work. It's like a one week long working interview that has been tested hundreds and hundreds of times for for different markers. And those two things combined together is what gives us our success rate. And and what's really important is when, when we're talking with individuals, we tell them that we're gonna give you the same tools that the Fortune 500 companies use for their hiring. Don't you believe that they know what they're doing? Yes, they know what they're doing. The only difference is we've changed the algorithm to work for Filipino culture versus American culture, and nobody else has that. So when we put that together, we know we're putting the right person in the position, and we can feel comfortable, for, and that business owner can too, that it's not just, oh, I like you, Paul, I'm going to hire you today. Yeah, now, they do right. like them too. Yeah, I they mean, do like part them. of it. But. So, so she'll deliver three candidates. Yes. You know, think about it. So Anne works with the people in the front end. They fill out a survey. They find out what the needs are. They spend a little time there. And then they go, next time they do something is they're, they're meeting three candidates and any of the three can do the job. Any of them can. So then they're looking for what is the cultural fit in their business that they're comfortable with. And it does get down to kind of who they like and all, but, but they know that they're going to be able to do the job. Right. But then it's all about, you know, again, statistically it works. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. And they look very similar to the, the way that the Coca-Cola company approached it. And, you know, yeah. I, you know, I work with a lot of com- companies post doing consulting for other companies, but the Coca-Cola had a fantastic system. And uh, I know when I had my outsourcing company, they did a similar thing. So that's really smart. And, and back to you, Mark, around, you know, your ideal clients. Are there any particular sectors, you know, like who do you love hiring uh, virtual employees for? Well, we, we, we've we set up avatars, you know, and avatar is our ideal client in, in different areas. And what we've found that is a company that has a lot of transactions, whether they're verbal phone calls coming in, their emails coming in, um, maybe it's a work order type system for them, a software, um, payments coming in and out. And, and so our clients typically have a lot of interaction with their customers, whether it's verbally, written, different ways. And so what we looked at is service industries that have that. Our our clients typically already have employees. They have two to four. So they're used to the stress of paying that payroll tax and paying for those healthcare benefits once a month and, and, and going online and actually seeing that money flow out of their bank account. And um, so that's real important because if they've never had an employee before, they don't understand that pain. So they typically have had that. And so what we found are the service businesses are very intense that they have the questions come in, they have the transactions come in. Um, We have a real estate background. So 
we started off with our clients were around the real estate industry, property management, community management. Um, but we've got other companies that you wouldn't think of that are highly transactional. And uh, we, we've recently brought on a brewer, a brewer, if I can say brewery. that. Brewery. Yeah. And yeah. if I can say that right, you know, an HVAC company that has people calling in, my heating and air is broken. So they set up an appointment, then our individual calls that person the day of their appointment says, hey, Bill with our company is going to be there. He's going to have his shirt on with the logo and his ID, and he'll be there between two and three. And then they can do the follow-up calls of, hey, Bill was there. Is everything fixed to your satisfaction? Just want to make sure that everything was done well. So th those are our typical clients. And like I said, we started out around the property management area, but we've had janitorial services. We've had personal chefs because they got to get an order in to make sure all the veggies and the fruits and the meats and all are there. Yes. And they don't have time to do that. So the assistant does that, make sure all the deliveries are made to where they're going to cook. Yeah, great. And 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 for, for you, the uh, cultures, right? Um, you know, the American culture, Filipino culture, you know, what what differences or similarities do you see and, and what are some of the things that uh, people or some of the misconceptions of working with uh, Filipinos? Well, the culture is very much closely aligned to the U.S. culture. There's 1.5 million Filipino workers working for U.S. clients already. <laughs> so uh, a very they big. Work all night. Right. Yeah, they, already work, they already work yeah. all night and some during the day. It just kind of depends. But it's amazing to me how how closely aligned the culture is. Probably the biggest difference is that they tend to be a little bit more shy, less direct. And so that's part of the mentoring that I do with them to share with them when to raise their hand and when to ask questions, um, because nobody's ever taken the time to really talk to them in that way, right, and share with them what it takes to be really effective working with U.S. clients. Um, but they love to serve. They are, have just, you know, a great work ethic. Probably the biggest misconception is that they don't speak English well. Because we've all called a call center, we've always had a bad experience, but those are typically not the Filipino uh, call centers that you're calling. And so I think, you know, that's probably if I had one big like flag I could plant in the sand is like, you've been talking to Filipino people probably for years and not even not even known about it. Yeah. Uh, and because it really is very transparent. And And with COVID, have you seen... You know, more people looking at outsourcing uh, now that COVID's hit, or is it the same? I'd love to get your insight into that. We grew 33% last year. So I have to say, COVID was pretty good to us. I mean yeah, we hate <laughs> to say that, but it, it has been because people usually came to us or we would meet with them and they say, Oh, uh, somebody can't work, not in my office. They got to be there so I can walk down the hall, look over their shoulder and see what they're doing. They now know that you don't have to have that. Yeah. And, you know, interesting. So right before this, I had a sales call with a new potential client and he said, yeah, you know, have a, had COVID not happened, had I not been exposed to that, I don't know that I would be as receptive. He says, but now I know working remotely does work and now I can reduce my payroll outlay invest more in my people so that, you know, there's bonuses and things like that. He goes, I can ship the dollars around and have a bigger impact. And that's exactly what we love to see. Uh, you know, a, a lot of times it's about taking your staff and elevating them. So they're doing more of the work that they like to do themselves. They're more productive. They're happier. Um, we had one client after working with us for two years, he said, at 530, I walk my office and it's crickets, like everybody, and this is pre-COVID, like yes. it's just, everything is just quiet because I've been able to give my people more work-life balance. Because they worked till seven or eight right. before. It was, it was like always churning and how he goes, what a blessing it's been to be able to give my workers their lives back so they can invest more in their families. And so yeah. that's the kind of impact we like to have. Yeah. And I think the hardest thing, you know, I know when I was in the industry and I still sort of mentor people in the industry was that, you know, 
yeah, it, it's hard to know something unless you experience. It's like being a parent. It's like doing, you know, certain things. Until you've really done it, you don't really know what it's like. And I always say to people, <laughs> look, just try it, right? Because, you know, your experience is probably similar to mine. Not many people give virtual teams back, right, once, <laughs> once they start. So it's just a matter of when you start, right? Not if you're ever going to do it, it's when you do it. And I think, yeah, COVID's been a great snowball to, to do that forward because when I started in 2012, it was like, yeah, it was very much around, look, if they're not physically here, you know, and, it, and you know, I think that is COVID and the way that things are moved have definitely uh, proven that. So, um, look, I think that's brilliant. I could ask you a million more questions on this section, but I, I'm, I, I do know that uh, my listeners like a... A, a, a packed full interview plus looking at some uh, some other areas of your business as well but before we go into the next section i'd like to talk about you and you listening right now whether you've got the sales machine to meet your ambitions and if you want to know and if you can't answer that question i'm going to help you you can go to our assessment so it's at paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash assessment. There's 14 questions. You answer them in three minutes. But the most important thing is, yes, you understand what the result is, but what I'll do is actually then have a call with you to work through the specific plan. So just go to paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash assessment. So the next section is the live section. So I'll go to you first, Mark, but what are some of the daily habits that help you be successful? Being organized in what I need to do, the top two things every day. So when I approach, I know those top two things have to be done. They're not always pleasant things either. But if I can get those done, it seems like everything else falls into place. Great. And, and as an example, what were those top two today? Uh, top two today, I had for a, a, an investment that we were taking care of for somebody um, to handle a difficult situation with some insurance, a difficult situation um, with some accounting. And so I was on the phone with a, a, a couple of vendors taking care of those matters and they weren't pleasant. I wasn't looking forward to it and they didn't turn out as great as I had hoped, but they're not as bad as they really could have been. But then once I got that finished, I was able to move forward with some of the other things that I was dealing with today that, that have to get done, but I wasn't pulling around that bag of rocks behind me thinking, oh gosh, I've got to do something with these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love that. The old Brian Tracy, you know, the, the frog. So, uh, Anne, for you, what are some of the daily habits that help you be successful? I think for me, it's having a good breakfast. We always have breakfast together. Mark actually makes my breakfast. And so that's time for us to sit down, connect, like you said, talk about the what's the top level things that we need to get done today. Um, the next kind of big habit I have is, um, you know, just kind of the way I end my day. I look back through the day and I go, okay, was everything completed? If not, we'll, I'll work till that's done. Assuming everything's completed, it's setting it up for the next day. And making sure that I, I live by time blocking. And so my, I live in my calendar um, and I'm very, very focused and segmented in that. So um, those are kind of my habits. Brilliant. Great. Well, look, the next section is the give section. And what's a charity or community that you both are passionate about and why? We got involved in, gosh, it's been 15 or so years now in a program around the states called DECA, D-E-C-A. It doesn't stand for really what the business <laughs> is, but uh, high schoolers learning marketing, okay? Just focus on high schoolers got to learn marketing. So we've been in schools teaching. We've been in with classrooms and teaching about marketing efforts and marketing processes. Um, we've judged county, state, national, and international competition entrepreneurial. Um, so a small business startup idea that somebody will have, they put a written plan together. We evaluate the written plan. They do an oral present. They're basically trying to raise money, right? So I've got this, you know. <laughs> With pre-shark tank. <laughs> yeah, pre-shark tank. So, so all these young kids, you know, they're in their suits. They're all dressed up and they're doing these presentations. And we just love it because we can help those kids and, and, and push them 
in the right direction for what works, what is marketing, how it's effective. And uh, I know in Atlanta, they had an international competition. There were 22,000 teenagers in town a few years ago. Wow. In a few hotels. And you didn't hear of mischief. You only heard of the great things that were being done. And each one of these kids is a winner. And and we've been involved with DECA for so long. And I, we just love that. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. And, you know, talking about marketing, I, I still remember the first time I went to Atlanta and and sat in uh, Woodruff's chair in the Coca-Cola building. You know, I worked for Coca-Cola and it was, uh, yeah, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. So uh, the last section is the rapid fire section where I ask you some questions, you give me some rapid fire responses. Yeah. And uh, we've, uh, we've, let's say everyone listening that we've worked out which strengths apply to which question. So the first one is to you, Anne, what are your top three personal effectiveness tips? First of all, is plan your day the day before. So again, t- c- come up with the top three. The second thing would be take care of your body, move. You know, whether we do yoga, that's kind of our thing, but m- move, keep, keep limber. And the third one is keep sharp, read, read. Uh, you know, I, I have a, I have a book right now that I, that I'm reading about rehumanizing your business. So I try to pick a book a month and really kind of get into it and figure out what can I do to expand my horizons. Brilliant. And uh, what's a piece of technology that's essential for running your business? Zoom. (laughs) Seriously, Zoom is, before that, it was Skype. I love Skype too. Actually, those are the two platforms I use all the time. Of course, email, but Skype for instant messaging, kind of just keeping up with my team group chats, Zoom for these types of meetings and for, uh, you know, being able to podcast and to meet people all over the world. Yeah, it is really the window to the world, isn't it? It's uh, it's quite mm-hmm. amazing. Uh, so the next one is for you, Mark. And what's your best source of new ideas? I know that Anne's just said, you know, reading's hers, but what's the best source of new ideas for you? I read a lot and I talk to a lot of people. And, you know, we, we were in the Bahamas and somebody mentioned VAs. And I started researching, I started thinking, I introduced myself to this person that said, oh, you should think about VAs. Six years ago, we met with him, spent a weekend together, and out of that was born this business. So I've got a very inquisitive mind about things and can see trends when not everybody else can see those. So that's been very helpful for us in all of our business. Anne now says we're not starting any new businesses. So I have to turn down those trends and send them to somebody else. So Yeah, well, I think you've got to get, I think you've got five books and six businesses. So I think a book you got to do next. So you, you even it out. You got six and six, but very quickly, I had a similar conversation in 2011. And uh, it was when I just left corporate and someone said something. And yeah, within a week, I was uh, on a plane to the Philippines. And then this sort of journey went there. So look, I, I to- totally agree. Uh, I think, you know, podcasting is my thing. Book is both of yours. But I think also just, you know, hearing that idea and seeing it in the future is brilliant. So the, the last question is uh, the big question. And I always leave it to last for that reason. But uh, for Mark, for you, what impact do you want to, and, and I suppose you're speaking on behalf of both of you, but what impact do you want to both leave on the world? We make our clients' lives better in the United States. We save them money. We increase their level of service to their clients. But on the other side of the world, in the Philippines, we're really changing lives there. We, we have hundreds, which means thousands of people within the families that we impact. We provide health care to our staff members there. Nobody else in our industry really provides the type of HMO coverage we give for them and for their dependents. You know, at, at Christmas, we had a party. It was a Zoom party with hundreds of people and we had magicians and all the things. And we gave away gifts and we gave away a scooter. And people were just so appreciative of that. Because people in the United States don't take, they take advantage of a VA in regard to thinking of them as a tool. And when we humanize it and make it to where they learn how to work better with our staff, our client, our staff does, it makes life better for them. And then we pay at a very high rate 
for those members that work for us. So we're impacting thousands of lives on both sides of the world. And we're just proud that we're able to do that. Yeah, we're just well, very pleased. Really well said. So look, I will read so I make sure I get it right. But you know, it's been wonderful meeting both of you. Um, you know, I can see just the harmony between the way you guys do business, but also, you know, as you've just said then, Mark, the way that you also impact others. It's uh, it's an absolute joy hearing it. But you can um Two, two things that you can do to find out more. So you can obviously go to hiresmartvirtualemployees.com. Uh, so that's the website. But you can also go to forward slash podcast to get a free book. Now, is that right, Anne? That is. That's exactly no. right. Excellent. Great. Now, the uh, other thing is if you want to find out more and maybe explore this for yourself, like I said, it shouldn't be, a, you know, if I'm ever going to do it, it's about a win. And if you'd like to force, you know, Fast track that when, just go to meetwithann.com and you can either do A-double-N or as Anne, because she adopted an E earlier in her life, you can go to Anne, which is A-double-N-E. So meetwithann, however you want to spell it, dot com. But an absolute joy having both of you on today. So I really appreciate it. Thank you, Paul. We had a great time today. It's been wonderful to be with you today. Thank you. Great. Thanks, guys. Bye. So I really loved that interview with both Mark and Anne. I hope you did as well. I loved the way that they really use both a combination of emotional and analytical factors. And to have a 98.7 success rate is quite amazing in the industry. So they really know their stuff and they're building a great business. I want to help you build team members to help you build your own business. So you can get all the show notes. So all the links, everything mentioned will be fully transcribed in the show notes. Also love to know your takeaways. So why don't you take a photo of the podcast itself and share it and mention both Mark and Anne. They're very supportive and helpful people. And if you've got any questions, they will definitely get to you. Also, as I said, there's a free book that that Anne is giving away. So if you go to hire virtual, uh, sorry, hire smart virtual employees.com forward slash podcast, you can get the book then. And remember, Anne kindly offered to also have a personal call with you. Just go to meet with Anne and you can spell it A-N-N-E or just A-N-N.com. So meet with Anne.com. And remember, if you haven't got the sales machine to meet your ambitions, go to paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash assessment. Please take action to build, live and give. Thanks for listening to the Build, Live, Give podcast. If you like what you heard, please share it and leave us a review. It would mean the world to us.